Alimuom is an ambitious looking independent film released locally in the Philippines. It's one of the freshest movies that ever came out here, and just look at that. Welcome to Pelikulayan, the place for Filipino film analysis, reviews, and filmmaking lessons. This film raises many concerns and issues in our present day Philippines. Almost like a black mirror dystopian world, for technological and artificial ways to experience pleasure, a highly capitalistic government that abuses labor in a crumbling world and society. One thing I love most about the story is its commentary on OFW and how people in the story might migrate to another world which has more sustainability and better quality of life as opposed to this shit hole, the biodome. Much like, no, exactly like our own competent and smart countrymen working abroad and making other countries' businesses and economy richer because this country is in fact a shit hole. In short, brain drain. There are also other things such as strong familial ties between Filipinos, but also broken families, which raises a concern. There is too much information. This film goes on different tangents by raising issues. It's hard to track which direction we are going. Find your theme, find your message, and every scene should double down on that. An example is a movie I've talked about, and it does a great job on doing what I said. Another criticism is that excessive English is used in the script, which I dislike. This doesn't look good when TV does it and it doesn't look good when movies do it. There's a different feel to it when the person naturally has a tongue for the language. There's a different cadence. Director Keith Sikat does seem to have this way of speaking between Tagalog and English very well. To what a to farm film could be. Because the assumption is that if it's a to farm film, you know, you should be able to do it. It's a realistic. But the characters are not him. They shouldn't sound like him. Monconfiado and Dido de la Paz at least tried, and their performance felt the most natural. Ang goal natin ay observe ng farming techniques ng mga kung ano mga kalab sa mas ilang tao dito ang kumpapatayan dahil ka. I get that they are academic intellectuals or whatever, but it just sounds unnatural when they go from very, very fluent Tagalog to not as proficient English. Maybe the main protagonist pulled this off well too, but not too much. Gusto kong makilala mo kung sino makakalaman natin. I don't know how they survive outside the Bayo They're there. I've never seen a Filipino talk that way. It's more like mansion tig iisa, okay? Alam mo yung mansion? Pag rinereglay yung babae, nagme-mansion. Mayayaman. Like ako nung nag-aaral ako sa Lasal, syempre, pag probinsyano ka, simple ka lang 'ton. Nagko-commute ka, bitin ang baon mo, tapos lahat ng mga kaklase mo, lahat. 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 At makikita mo at makikilala at makakasalamuha. Ah, dude, ah. Kamusta bro? <laughs> Dude, kamusta? Oh, okay lang. Ah, it's a lit panic. Kamusta din ko siya. Lozol, bro. <laughs> uh, oh, okay lang. Uh, about that pair. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your what's your course pala? Ah, uh, ako, uh, edok sa. Ako kasi ano, mechanical engineering and uh, a major on uh, Jupiter. The Oscar goes to Anyway, I've rambled too long on this. It's just a little glitch in the system and I can't explain why. It just can't be mixed this way. I relate to this struggle in writing because I've done a sci-fi screenplay set in the Philippines to explain terminology and science, and I can't help but mix English, which I should avoid to the best of my ability. One thing I've learned is that you don't need all the describing and explaining science. If I recall correctly, they keep going back to certain expositions such as relativity. You don't really have to go in depth too much because there are simple ways of showing this visually. Interstellar, on the other hand, took their time to explain the concept of relativity because it was integral to the plot. In fact, it was everything to the plot. Anyway, me and the writer were both geeks and this could have been worked on. Moving on to the good part. For most of you, this is probably what hooked you into the film. You may not have watched this, but goddamn if this poster doesn't grab you. A Filipino movie that looks like Star Trek. I honestly expected the effects to flop miserably, so I came into the movie theater 
expecting a shit show because this has never been done well before. No, it has not. While its story is very similar to Interstellar, its visuals draw inspiration from Blade Runner and Star Wars, which did in fact inspire the director himself. It's a mix of aesthetics like cyberpunk, post-apocalyptic, and outer-worldly. This may also remind you of the popular open-world game Fallout, both of which does include different sectors or tribes, which the game calls settlements. The costumes and sets had a lot of heart put into it. You can even compare them to our blockbuster hits and say that they did even this better, with a hundred less times the budget. CGI and other post-production effects are very minimal despite what the trailer might have you believe, which is understandable because the trailer is a huge selling point for this movie, and CGI isn't as easy as other movies make it seem. Just look at cinematography appear to turn out great, which is surprising because in the behind the scenes reel it appeared that they shot using mirrorless cameras, not even cinema standard cameras like the Airy or Red. Of course, we all know the reason why they would do that. But any good cinematographer will tell you, it's not about the camera, it's about the lighting and composition. And for the most part, the shots were brilliantly done in those regards. Good job by cinematographer Ice Idanan. There are some shots though that look like they had to settle on it, like out of focus shots, poorly framed shots, and bad camera direction. Most likely not a limitation of skill, but other factors. I, have, I don't have much to say in this area aside from the sound mixing, which is very detailed, but at the same time I've noticed some weird noise artifacts that come in and out. Also some dialogue could have been trimmed by the editing, but I guess it can't be helped if you're running with very little time. These festivals do have very close deadlines. Anyway, I made a review on this movie because I thought it was something special. Movies like this don't come along every day. I think nothing in the Philippine indie film market has seen this in fact. Movies like this deserve support, and in fact, live off it. Share it to friends and family, share the trailer, share this video. We can't just let movies like this go down in history as something that's lost and forgotten. Not if I have something to say about it, and not if you have something to say about it. Imagine a Philippine Star Wars. Granted, this movie will probably not go down and be remembered as that, but it will most certainly be the spark that ignites the flame of the next legendary sci-fi epic loved by the world and is in fact a Filipino movie. So do just one little thing to get word around this movie. There is a couple of days for Two Farm Film Festival as of this video being posted. But if you can't catch it at these dates, you can catch it at the theaters such as Cinema 76, Black Maria, Cinema Centenario, and Cinematic Manila. Like their pages for updates and as well as Two Farms and Alimuoms. I'm giving them free promotion because I'm thankful for their contribution to Philippine cinema. And I'm just so done with bad CGI and effects ruining a local movie scene. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.